Welcome to today's webinar with the topic Compact and Sophisticated. Mini spectrometers doing big business. My name is Christoph Wöhne and I'm Senior Sales Engineer at Hamamatsu Photonics Deutschland. At first, we will have a course overview about Hamamatsu Photonics. Secondly, I will talk about spectroscopy in general. Then, I will take you along the electromagnetic range from the UV-VIS to the NIR and conclude with a demonstration of our new evaluation software Tokuspec. Hamamatsu Photonics is a Japanese company founded almost 70 years ago. Around 9% of the annual turnover is invested in R&D and we are proud to have contributed to three Nobel Prizes. The vast range of products in our portfolio reaches from lamps and photomultiplier tubes over solid-state photodetectors such as diodes and image sensors for X-ray, UV, visible and IR range, to complete cameras and different optical systems such as, for example, forensic slide scanners. More than 15,000 products emphasize Hamamatsu's broad expertise in photonics. Now let us get to spectroscopy. In principle, it means that light is split up in its wavelength and measured quantitatively. We can divide spectroscopy in a few primary types, depending if the light to measure was transmitted through, absorbed, reflected, emitted or scattered by the specimen, or if we look at fluorescence. With its experience in MEMS technology, Hamamatsu can create transmission gratings by themselves. Over decades, Hamamatsu perfected its capabilities in image sensor production and the consequent step was to start building sophisticated spectrometer modules. The core part of spectrometers are the entrance slit, a collimating mirror, a grating to split up the light in its wavelength, and an image sensor to measure the intensity of the different energy levels of light quantitatively. Some of those modules are most compact and affordable ones. We will look at a little closer today. Next to microspectrometers that cover the UV-VIS region and the SMD spectrometer that is sensitive to up to 1050 nanometers, we will also discuss Fabry-Perot interferometers and the new Fourier transform infrared engine. Various families of conventional grating spectrometers are also available that might be better suited for your application. But today, we want to focus on the MOEMS devices. We can divide spectroscopy by the light's path or by the used wavelength. The latter depends on how light interacts with a specimen. With UV-VIS spectroscopy, as the name says, light in the ultraviolet and visible range is used. This kind of light can excite electrons in an atom to a higher energy level within the molecule by absorbing the photon. As this is not a stable state, the electron will go back to the ground state and emit a photon in any direction. The difference of these two energy levels exactly defines the photon's energy and thus its wavelength. This means that it is specific and characteristic for the atom. Some typical applications are color measurement with displays or print media or water quality monitoring. Those microspectrometers in hermetically sealed packages are well suited for the long wave ultraviolet and visible range. The device on the left hand side uses an active pixel sensor CMOS, which means that every pixel has its own amplifier. This results in high sensitivity and speed and an electronic shutter is available. The passive pixel sensor grants superior linearity, which might be more important for your application. When we look at the upper end of the visible spectrum and beyond, there are other material characteristics to observe. In this area, we can look at food ripening condition or analyze agricultural crops to name just two examples. Still, with an inexpensive silicon-based CMOS sensor, the SMD spectrometer covers up to over 1000 nanometers. 
its ingenious structure with the grating etched into the focus mirror to split up the light onto the image sensor allows a compact size of around 12 to 4 to 3 millimeters. The weight of under 1 gram makes it ideal to integrate in products with confirmed space, such as handheld devices. It is mass producible and thus can achieve attractive prices in a two digit euro range for your serious production. As it deploys an active pixel sensor, it is not only tiny, but also highly sensitive, very fast, and has an electronic shutter. To show its capabilities, Hamamatsu built a demonstrator unit with the SMD spectrometer. A halogen lamp in the head illuminates the specimen. Via Bluetooth, the measured spectrum can be seen on a PC, smartphone, or tablet. The biggest part about the handheld module is actually the battery. When pointed at an apple, for example, it is possible to detect if the apple has been bruised by falling or some other shock. With the bare eye, we cannot discover before cutting the apple open. Going towards longer wavelength, we get to NIR spectroscopy. While in uv vis spectroscopy, electrons are excited, near-infrared light has lower energy and excites molecular bindings. Different possible vibrations are as follows. The top row shows symmetrical, the bottom row asymmetrical movement. Along the bond, in the plane of the bond or perpendicular to it, in this drawing back and forth. Again, the energy levels are discrete and specific for the binding. As an example, water shows strong absorption at 1450 and 1950 nanometers. Very important applications for NIR spectroscopy are plastic or food sorting. Different kinds of polymers can be distinguished by their spectra. Plastics that look transparent for our eyes can be differentiated in the NIR range. Nutrients of food, such as fat or protein, are quantized as well as allergens like gluten or lactose. As the sensitivity of silicon decreases drastically over 1000 nanometers, indium gallium arsenide, or short ingas, is mostly used as a NIR sensor material. Next to standard ingas, which is sensitive from around 900 nanometer to 1.7 micrometer, there are also extended ingas sensors with cutoff wavelength of 1.9, 2.2 or 2.55 micrometers. Indium gallium arsenide is a challenging material. The higher the cutoff wavelength, the harder it gets to grow the material with a minimal number of defects. Those defects lead to lower signal quality. So the bigger the needed ingas area, the higher the probability of defects in it. This need for selection means that the cost dramatically increases with the area. By using interferometric approaches, it is possible to reduce the size of the needed indium gallium arsenide sensor. In the time domain, the sensor sweeps through the wavelengths. Light is reflected between two mirrors. Only a certain wavelength is interfering constructively and at some times, after many reflections, passes through to the sensor. The upper mirror is fixed on a membrane. By applying a voltage between the mirrors, the distance is varied, leading to a sweep through the wavelength range. Next to the FPI sensors, which are very compact and affordable, Hamamatsu offers modules that already contain a light source to offer out-of-the-box usability. In a few minutes, at the end of today's webinar, we will have a look at how easy it is to make first measurements. The strong absorption of water around 1450 and 1950 nanometers is very prominent and often used for moisture content measurement. This absorbance spectrum also illustrates the lineup of Hamamatsu's FPIs. As mentioned before, one application for NIR spectroscopy is plastic sorting. Here, you can see the spectra of three types of plastics, PET, PVC, and PS. 
measured with the FPI between 1550 and 1850 nanometers. If plastic sorting is interesting for you, I can warmly recommend the webinar of my colleague Moritz Fischer. He will go into detail about INGAS sensors and applications they are suited for, like hyperspectral imaging. Sometimes you need a wider range than 3 or 400 nanometers. With sensitivity up to 2.5 micrometers, decent resolution and a signal-to-noise ratio of more than 10,000 to 1, I would like to introduce the newest member of Hamamatsu spectroscopic family, the Fourier Transform Infrared Engine. Compared to grating spectrometers with sensitivity of up to 2,500 nanometers, it is very compact with a reasonable price. Let me quickly tell you about the FTIR engine's working principle. The measured light is divided by a beam splitter to partly hit a fixed and a movable mirror. There it is reflected and the two beams interfere with each other. By moving one mirror, we can change the optical path difference. The interference signal is Fourier transformed into spectra. Looking at these absorbance spectra of different kinds of sugar, we can see that the result of the compact FTIR engine, here in blue, is comparable to bulkier benchtop devices. Some application fields are for instance industry, agriculture and recycling. In this graph you can see various functional groups and their absorption bands. As a technology-driven company, Hamamatsu does not stop there. We are already working on improvements on the FTIR engine's algorithm to achieve better signal-to-noise ratio and higher speed. In addition, the development of an Ethernet version and a specifically tailored light source are underway. To conclude the theoretical part, you can have a look at this table, where the interferometric devices are compared to conventional grating spectrometers. If you need, you can briefly pause the video or just contact us. We are happy to help. As promised, let's find out how easy it really is to use the FBI module with Hamamatsu's new mini spectrometer evaluation software Tokuspec. To have a practical example, we will try to distinguish different materials. Here we have two cotton t-shirts, black and red, as well as a cashmere cap. After opening the software, we connect the module via the supplied USB cable. Tokuspec detects all the Hamamatsu spectrometers connected to the PC and operates multiple devices simultaneously. We select the module, switch on the integrated LAM, and we already can see the spectrum that is measured. To distinguish the material of clothes, we place the module on top of them and make a snapshot of the spectrum. We restart and repeat it for the other t-shirt. And for the cap. Looking at the spectra, we see that the t-shirt's cotton spectra looks very much alike, while the cashmere cap's spectrum is completely different. Of course, this is not all you can do with Tokuspec. To mention just a few things, you can set time-lapse conditions, acquire background, shading or reference images and select your calculating method. You can save your data using some preset file format or include custom formats on your own. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this short introduction and you could learn a thing or two. Please do not hesitate to contact us. We will be happy to assist you with your sophisticated projects.